All right, so I think we'll go ahead and get started with the second half of the session for the unconscious bias training workshop. So the way this will be structured is we'll spend a little bit of time to explain what is unconscious bias, and then we're going to do a short game that'll be most of the, of the workshop. So we're gonna just kind of get us all on the same page. So this will be pretty quick for what we cover. Uh, the unconscious bias, so what is unconscious bias? It's this idea that, so this I think is a great way to start by explaining this. So approximately every day we receive 40 million bits of information, 99.999% of what we can process uh, is in the, or we receive, like so the glacier is like 40 million bits of information we receive in a day. But in reality we're only able to actually process 40 bits at a time. So you can kind of see like what is represented here is that you're only able to actively understand to see hardly less than 1% of the information you receive uh, like the things you uh, the things you uh, understand and are information you see in a day so the idea of unconscious bias is that everyone has their own different biases or perspectives their own different experiences that they've had in their life that skew the way that they see things as what someone else might see uh, so this one is kind of getting at it that we all kind of bring our own perspectives, our own experiences into the workplace, into collaborating with other people, and those biases can influence us for how we work with other people, the way that we work with other people, the way we make other people feel when we're working together with them. And the idea of unconscious bias is that just like how 99% of the information we receive in a day we, we don't really process, a lot of times the biases that we're bringing in we don't really notice or understand ourselves. So the idea of an unconscious bias training is to help bring awareness to some of the our own biases or our, or our own perspectives of things that we bring into a collaborating with other people or working with others. Uh, and so this one is kind of getting at the idea that when we are aware of those biases, when we understand these different perspectives that other people are bringing into a project or a team an open source community, we are able to take the best pieces that everyone is offering and what everyone is bringing to the table. When we can work together with other people to collaborate and appreciate the diversity of thought and what everyone is bringing to the table, when we take a moment to realize that not everyone has gone through the same experiences that we've had to, to get to the table. Not everyone has gone through the same things to be here in this room right now it can help us understand, be more empathetic for other people and understand that, have, have some more empathy for what they're bringing to the table and, and have a chance to listen to them. Just like in the keynote we heard this morning, taking the time to listen before you speak and understand what other people are, are bringing to the conversation, to the project, to the community. So now, no more talking. We're going to play a game and everyone's going to have to stand up and the way this is going to work, everyone will come over to the right side of the room uh, and we're all going, you, everyone's going to start in the same place in a straight line by the chair that's facing backwards. And so I want to do a disclaimer in the beginning. This is a game where there is no winner and no loser. So there's no prize for this game, but it's just one that it's more of an experience than it is a winning losing game. So everyone can stand up and you can come over to this side of the room and I'm sorry for the recording but we're probably not going to be able to use the microphone as much. This is going to be a little bit more hands on. So the way this game will work is I'm going to read a series of statements and depending on the response you're going to take one step forward or you're going to take one step backward depending on what so everyone will start in a straight line in equal distance here, facing this direction, or, or everyone's going to be facing towards the stairwell. And one step, and one step, it's not going, we're not on the film. It's, it's not going to be recorded as well because this is more going to be interactive. So one step is going to be, because we're also a little tight on space, and we have some recording equipment. Some people, it's, you may end up in different places. 
And this is also going to be a, while we're playing the game, it's going to be a more reflective, silent activity for you to think about while we're going through it. So I will read the statements aloud, so please take one step forward or backward if the statement applies to you. If you don't feel comfortable acknowledging a statement that applies to you, you don't have to move when it's read. No one else will know whether it applies to you or not. So there'll be a little bit of a chance for you to think about each statement. If you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to take a step. So if, step, if the statement applies to us, we need to move forward. I, I will say you either take a step forward or a step back. Okay. I'll, I'll say it in each, each question. All right. So if you are right-handed, take one step forward. If English is your first language, take one step forward. If one or both of your parents have a university degree, take one step forward. If you can find bandages or band-aids at a mainstream store that match or blend in with your skin tone, take one step forward. If you can find like a bandage or some kind of like band-aid that matches your skin tone or blends in with your skin tone, take one step forward. If you rely or have relied on primarily public transportation, take one step back. If you have attended previous schools with people, or, or if you have worked in offices or workplaces with people you felt were like yourself, take one step forward. If you have attended a school or university, or if you have worked in an office or workplace, with people you felt like were like you, that you identified with, take one step forward. If you constantly feel unsafe walking alone at night, take one step back. If your household imply, uh, employs help as servants, gardeners, or cleaners, take one step forward. If you are able to move through the world without fear of sexual assault, take one step forward. If you studied the culture of your ancestors in grade school or elementary school, take one step forward. If you often felt growing up that your parents were too busy to spend time with you, take one step back. If you were ever made fun of or bullied for something you could not change or was beyond your control, take one step back. If your family has ever left your homeland or where you grew up and entered another country, not of your family's free will, take one step back. If you would never think twice about calling the police when trouble occurs, take one step forward. If your family owned a computer when you grew up, take one step forward. If you have ever been able to play a significant role in a project or an activity because of a skill or something you learned previously, take one step forward. Yeah. So if you have uh, ever been able to play a significant role in a project or activity because of a talent you gained previously, take one step forward. If you can show affection for your romantic partner in public without fear or of ridicule or violence, take one step forward. If you ever had to skip a meal or were hungry because there was not enough money to buy food, take one step back. If you feel respected for your career performance, take one step forward. If you have a physically visible disability, take one step back. 
If you have an invisible illness or disability, take one step back. If you were ever discouraged from an activity because of race, class, ethnicity, gender, disability, or sexual orientation, take one step back. If you ever tried to change your appearance, mannerisms, or behavior to fit in more, take one step back. If you've ever been profiled by someone else using stereotypes, take one step back. If you feel good about how your identity is portrayed in the media, news, social media, take one step forward. If you were ever accepted for something you applied to only because of your association with a friend or family member, take one step forward. If you're, all of your family has health insurance, take one step forward. If you have ever been spoken over because you could not articulate your thoughts fast enough, take one step back. If someone has ever spoken for you when you did not want them to do so, take one step back. If there was ever substance abuse in your household, take one step back. If you come from a single parent household, take one step back. If you live in an area with crime and drug activity, take one step back. If someone in your household suffered or suffers from mental illness, take one step back. If you have been or have known a victim of sexual harassment, take one step back. If you were ever uncomfortable about a joke related to your race, religion, ethnicity, gender, disability, or sexual orientation, but felt unsafe to confront the situation, take one step back. If you are never asked to speak on behalf of a group of people who share an identity as you, take one step forward. If you can make mistakes and not have people attribute your behavior to flaws in your racial or gender group, take one step forward. If you always assumed you'd go to college, take one step forward. If you have more than 50 books in your household, take one step forward. If your parents told you growing up that you could be anything you wanted to be, take one step forward. So go ahead and take a moment to look around you and where you are in the room and where other people in the room are as well. And just take a quiet moment just to think and think about some of the questions that were asked and think about what's going through your mind right now. And so the rest of this workshop will be kind of like a round table discussion. So we can all just kind of sit at this group of chairs and have a quick conversation and ask some questions. So one thing about these questions, uh, you don't have to respond. No one has to answer for any of these if you do not feel comfortable answering. But if you want to share or add a perspective, you're welcome to answer. And I want this to be, I don't want to be up here talking at a podium talking at you, but I want to be having, a, I want us to have a, an honest conversation, talk person to person with this. So, does anyone have a feeling of what did it feel like to be in the front of the group, or to be in the middle, or to be in the back? No one has to answer if you just want to think about 
the question in your own head and reflect on it, you don't have an answer either. No answer is required. So to me, I felt the people who are going forward are a little bit more privileged in their, uh, where they are from, uh, like uh, more developed countries. Because if you have seen, there were only two girls at the time who are Indians. And I'm not really proud. And, and I guess I just want to add that you don't realize it in our life, but small things matter a lot, like the build up. And you see that in the exercise. Like every The gender difference? Yeah. So I, I would be the same thing. So um, at first, the questions weren't related to gender or appearance. It's more like social status in a lot of ways. So, you know, I, I would have Thank you. 
The next question I had was, if there was a moment when you were standing next to someone and you broke your position in line, either forward or backward, how did you feel in that moment when you changed places with someone else? Shit. That <laughs> felt weird. <laughs> I didn't expect to feel that weird. <laughs> Even, even when yeah. you were stepping forward, and the other person was just standing there or stepping back. It made you feel different. Even if you're more privileged. And a way to see your visual life. Our lives to you know make it more successful. 
The other questions I had was, uh, what do you wish people knew about one of the identities, situations, or disadvantages that caused you to take a step backwards? question is, what do you wish people knew about one of the identities, situations, or disadvantages that caused you to take a step backwards?
Anyone can always go back and answer any of the other questions, but the last one I had, and this was one I kind of want to hear from everyone that participated with this, but was how can your understanding of your privileges or your marginalizations improve your relationships with yourself and with other people? So this is kind of going back to like how we have these unconscious biases that we hold. And I think that this is why I really love doing this exercise because instead of just talking and thinking about these biases that we have or what we might have in the back of our minds, you get to really see and actually visualize that. So this is kind of what I want to hear or hear everyone's perspective on this. So it's just how you feel like this might change like how you work with other people or or if there's something that you hadn't thought about before with even like in an open source project like Fedora or in your personal life and your career, if this is something that you found valuable or interesting or how this might change the way you think about working with other people or what you learned from this is really what I'm kind of getting at here. What thing that you felt like you was your big takeaway, like your big your big thing that you're taking away from this session. As I mean, but if you mentioned before, despite the fact that we were different, um, I mean, someone was that person, someone I was in the front, we are all in the same room. And since we're all in the same club, it means that we have done some work or a project or whichever kind of thing, not only for the Fedora project, maybe your work, school, university, or whatever, since we're all in the same room. I mean, Somebody else works harder to get in that room than someone else didn't. But still, the fact that we're at the same level at the end of the day means that we probably deserve the same thing. And that means that we should treat everyone equally. No? I think for me, one of the things I always, I feel like when I'm doing this exercise, I feel like it's always a good sign when you have a lot of spread. You don't have yeah, yeah. everyone. It's, a more, it's more valuable, it's more insightful, reflective when you, you can see some of the differences, that, these different challenges, the things that you know, aren't always visible to us when we're working with people, especially, like, especially I think it's really relevant with open source and like how so many of us will do our interaction with each other is text IRC meetings, pre-order tickets and mailing lists and threads and it's not a very interpersonal communication very uh, asynchronous, usually, communication, or very impersonal. But like for me, I, I think this is like, I guess one of the things that I love, like conferences like Block and how we have so many people here, is because you really get to put a background perspective on all of the different people that have worked hard to be here in this room, and gone through different experiences. Uh, and for me, that's always kind of like for me and it might help check the exercise. How much of a spread is there? Whether it's a, a spread, like, it's a big day sign. And there's some different backgrounds and perspectives. And it's, it makes it more valuable. It's just to take a minute to think about the things that you have, the devices you might have, that you may have had just by not having to think about these things, not having to face these things, never having to directly face them head on versus what many other people have to
lot of different avenues that I I can go down that I suddenly want to go home and like don't even have my books, right? Like, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm I'm there. Like it's 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 an inspiration to actually help. Yeah. For me. I certainly now like, see people very quickly. Yeah. That way, when you do like my the first couple times that I did this exercise, like, I saw, like, I had never had a good front end with them, and I saw, especially yeah. like around, and it's really nice. Oh, we like it. Yeah, and I'm just in the house, and the other people have had. And I, I think it's, it, it's always my most in the same room, everyone's done the minimum viable thing to, to be in that space. And then you see how, how they have it. All these other things they've gone through to just be in that room, to be here, to have had it. For me, I think the first time I did this, it was just that I felt speechless. I had never had to think about it. like my first conference, so I really never understood the idea of diversity and inclusion properly. So today, like, uh, in this activity, I came to know about the differences in the raising and the background of people. So I actually got empathetic. We should be, like, empathetic towards the backgrounds of people from where they come. So, like, I really got the, uh, like, the real meaning of, like, we should include everyone. Not everyone comes from the same background as you, not everyone is privileged as you. So, like, that was the main level.
I think that's actually all that we had left. Oh, there was a quick, do you want to cover this one, B, or do you want me to? OK, so these were just some kind of takeaways for how you can actually work with your unconscious bias. So the four tips, and this comes from a really great workshop that Google has uh, put together for unconscious bias as well. They have a free, like all these resources for organizing and running your own workshop. Uh, we didn't do that workshop, but this was one kind of takeaway that we borrowed from their uh, their program. But how you can work for how you can work with your unconscious bias. Commit to one of these actions for structuring for success. So this can be like a process for onboarding new people into a project or a community or some other, or even like a a new a, a new person in your workplace or someone who is just getting started out. Uh, and also try to, just how you were able to see and visualize some of the different biases and backgrounds that we share. Uh, maybe be a little bit more aware of some of those things when you talk to people who are newcomers or new contributors or are becoming more involved with the community. Yeah, we are at time. So we'll wrap this up, we'll, we'll wrap this, make this really quick. Uh, the last one was just measuring results. Uh, so like especially like an open source or projects or communities looking at things like diversity metrics uh, or looking at like community uh, like and this is one of the things that we, like, we've been trying to do with the Fedora diversity and inclusion team too is to have a demographic survey to understand the different like all the different kinds of people who are in the Fedora community but it can also be at an individual level too like for all of us in different sub projects say ambassadors design com ops uh, like, have you noticed any changes in your own team, or has there been more or less engagement by newcomers? Uh, recognize and evaluate subtle messages. So you might not realize that you're being very blunt or very honest, and sometimes, just and this I think was actually explained really well in the keynote this morning with how we communicate with other people at an interpersonal level, and in the same way that Rebecca this morning talked about thinking about the way that we phrase things, the way that we present things to others. We can try to be more considerate of the challenges faced by other people, try to be more encouraging or provide uh, different kinds of solutions or ideas instead of just saying, this doesn't work, or this is, this is wrong, and try to add, explain why, or give a, give a more reason for them for why they can, or how they can identify something for themselves next time. Uh, and the last part, and this is, I think, is a really big one, hold everyone accountable too. So question your first impressions, justify your decisions, and ask for feedback. Try to empower others in your teams, your projects, and your personal life to not just call out unconscious bias, but just to be aware of it. Just how like for a lot of us, like, like for me when I did this, like it was just an eye-opening experience just to realize that all these different people have different perspectives, have gone through different things to be in this room. I think just being aware of that is a huge part of, of calling it out. Even if it's not explicit, just trying to build that understanding and share that with other people is, is really important too. And then creating, or, or that kind of feeds into this, but creating a culture of calling out unconscious bias to help encourage others to justify decisions and to make decisions collectively. Uh, so these were just kind of four like quick takeaways. And you can structure this, I was kind of skewing this to Fedora context, but I think you can really take these for any context, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's uh, in your 
and your degree and your for going for your degree and your university uh, teams or projects you work with um, and your personal life with relationships you have with other people um, and I think that's really all that we had if you want to look at any of these resources that we use today uh, these were really a lot of what were used for across building this workshop so feel free to grab a picture and look at some of these uh, especially the the uh, second one the uh, privilege walk lesson that was a really great we adapted most we use that as a base but we made some adaptions for for flock for the people who would be here but that was a really great resource for the unconscious bias privilege walk and even the rework guides by google have a lot of like nice resources to uh, to improve like inclusion in your workspace so you can also take a look there and just uh, we wanted to we are doing this workshop uh, for the first time at flock so we wanted to know if you have any feedback or like what you thought about the whole workshop maybe do you want it to be shorter or maybe um, like some questions were a little bit uncomfortable or any if you have any feedback just let us know so we can work on it for future editions and this can be hallway track mailing list personal email it doesn't have to be here or right now but any any feedback you have is always welcome anytime you can just also find us around flock if you want to just talk with us privately as well you can send it on diversity mailing list uh, or like just reach out to any of yeah us on irc telegram anything okay. thanks everyone for participating yeah, thanks for being here